Four years ago, a tsunami smashed into the Fukushima nuclear reactor in Japan, causing a massive meltdown. Apart from destroying the reactors at Fukushima, it caused the shutdown of Japan's entire nuclear power industry. The company that runs the crippled plant, TEPCO, is still struggling to contain the contamination. The ABC's North Asia correspondent, Matthew Carney, got, a, got rare access inside the plant this week. Here's his report. It was the biggest nuclear disaster since Chernobyl. Massive tsunami slammed into the Fukushima nuclear power plant, causing three reactors to melt down. It was almost a complete nuclear catastrophe, and the company at the centre of it, TEPCO, was accused of cover-ups and gross negligence. Today, with full protection gear, TEPCO is giving 730 rare access to see inside the Fukushima plant. OK, so I'm about to go into the Fukushima nuclear plant where three reactors have melted down. Our visit will be tightly controlled today. We won't be able to film any security or security guards or fences or indeed any entrances to the reactor buildings and we'll be followed around by four people who will tell us exactly what to do. They're taking us to Reactor 4. It was offline when the tsunami hit, but a powerful hydrogen explosion left the nuclear fuel here in a very precarious situation. They've now succeeded in moving it to a secure location. On one side is the reactor, and on the other is the pool where we removed 1,500 spent fuel assemblies. It took about a year to do it. Sorting out Reactor 4 will be the easy part. Fixing Reactors 1, 2 and 3 will be much more difficult. They're full of molten nuclear fuel. Humans can't enter it would result in instant death. And robots have yet to be invented that can withstand the massive radiation levels near the melted cores. TEPCO admits it doesn't know the exact location and extent of the meltdowns. They claim it will take 40 years to fix, but others say centuries. We don't know the exact situation in detail. Fuel has been melted down, but nobody has seen it. We need to develop technology with help from around the world to know the real situation. The only way TEPCO can control the meltdowns in reactors 1, 2 and 3 is to pump water in to cool it. But the water becomes highly radioactive and mixes with other sources. Water is the big problem here and every day about 400,000 litres come from the mountains behind me as groundwater and eventually they get to the reactors and there they mix with highly radioactive water. Some of that water has been leaking into the sea, but most is stored in tanks, and that's multiplying by the day. The site already has a thousand tanks, but will soon reach its capacity. TEPCO is looking for solutions fast, and some of them are untested. 
So this is the ice wall and uh, when it's finished they hope to ring all four reactors. They'll build hundreds of uh, pipes, put them down about 30 metres and they hope that'll freeze the soil. And the idea is to try and divert the water, the groundwater, from entering the reactors. TEPCO claims it can take the radiation out of contaminated water by using its advanced liquid processing system or ALPS. But the ALPS system is not coping and has been plagued with technical problems. This is the third system TEPCO has in place, but it's still missing its self-imposed targets for decontaminating water. We can get rid of 62 kinds of nuclear substances and can make it to safe levels so only tritium remains.
Japan's nuclear authority has given TEPCO the all clear to discharge decontaminated water into the sea. It's making the few remaining fishermen in the area nervous. Fourth generation fisherman Hisashi Yoshida says these days it's hardly worth going out. The industry has pretty much been destroyed by the nuclear disaster. We could catch 150 or 160 kinds of fish before the disaster. Now we can only catch about 20%. Most have too much radiation. TEPCO says radiation levels have dropped significantly in Fukushima. But not far enough for 120,000 people. They're still living in temporary accommodation, unable to return to their homes. And it's taking its toll. Many are isolated from communities and families. The Fukushima government has reported more than 1,800 stress-related deaths among the evacuees. Shinichi Kumada is the community leader at this site, and he's been living in this three-room demountable for three and a half years. We escaped with nothing but the clothes on our back. I know we won't be going home. When I think of the future, I can't think of anything. It's hopeless. Shinichi wants to show us his hometown of Ukedo. It's off limits to the public. Radiation levels are dangerous. It's only four kilometers from the nuclear plant. Shinichi used to have a big home here and happy memories where his children and grandchildren all lived together. The whole town of 400 houses was washed away by the power of the tsunami. A community lost. And then the radiation poisoned the land and air. It's hard for me to come back here. I remember the good and joyful old days. Life has ended here.